I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Fiddle Eagles Now. We're going to get into a full reaction of the, oh my goodness, the mess. I mean, it's just what it is. It's a mess. The mess that the Eagles are here in just one second. First, though, I'm trying to get to 3,000 followers on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, and again, 21,000 of you guys are following us here on, my, on, on the channel, here on YouTube, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I tweet a bunch of stuff out. You can also DM me, ask me questions. At Real Thomas Mott is the place to go. Help me get to 3K. Go to my Twitter feed right now and hit that follow button. All right, so it's Monday, and we are just starting to get used to, I think, the fact that the Eagles are a bad football team and are going to lose a lot of games this year. I mean, this is this is getting embarrassing. Like, it's, it, it went from being kind of sad to, like, bad to being flat-out embarrassing because they were these com competitive in some of these losses, and it's starting to be like they're not competitive in these football games at all. It looks like an A team versus a B team, ones versus twos, when we play any sort of football teams out there. And even though the Raiders are a good team, 5-2, and two, their first place in the AFC West, Philadelphia should still have been able to match up decently against them, especially in the trenches, and yet they got absolutely manhandled. Like, I, I don't even know where to even start. Like, my blood is boiling watching that football game because after the first drive, and Philly looked good on the first drive. They ran the football, and you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? After the first drive, when you saw the Eagle defense trot out there and again give you the vanilla covered scheme that Jonathan Gannon apparently is married to that's holding him hostage, that has some sort of, you know, blackmail over him, and they just go right in the field and score on us, you just kind of sit back and you go, yep, this is going to be that kind of day, and guess what? It absolutely was. The Eagles have coaching problems. So we're going to talk about this. I think the Eagles obviously have some personnel problems. I think they're terrible at linebacker, and I mean terrible at linebacker. I think the offensive line was definitely shaky in this football game. Jalen Hurts was shaky in this football game. But the coaching on both sides of the football is the real culp uh, culprit. Make no mistake, this is a Jonathan Gannon, Nick Sirianni, and ultimately, as we'll talk about, Howie Roseman issue that goes from the top all the way down. And you just sit back and you wonder and you go, what is Jeffrey Lurie thinking about this? Like, what is the Eagles owner thinking when he watches an absolute disgrace of a football team out there each and every week? And there might even be some internal issues going on right now as well, which we'll get into here uh, in just one second. Let's just start with this. Pin common. We're, f we're two and five. Are the Eagles done? Like, seriously, are the Eagles done this year? Are the playoffs completely gone? If they are, type Y down below for yes. If they're not, type N down below for no. All right, let's just start right here with the most important thing. The Eagles' defense is the worst I've seen. Now, the Eagles had plenty of bad defensive performances the past couple of years, and there were times that you'd sit back and you'd go, okay, this Eagle defense doesn't look very good, but this is the worst that I have seen. And listen, Jonathan Gannon has got to go. Jonathan Gannon is the ultimate problem in the Eagles' defense because, as I said at the opener, the Eagles have good talent. They have talent on the defensive line. They have a lot of talent in the secondary, and yet they are getting absolutely waxed and worked week after week, team after team. It does not matter, and it's a scheme issue. I will not... I cannot say that they say it enough. This is an absolute scheme problem right now for the Philadelphia Eagles. When you decide that you are going to only bring four and sit back and play covers, not just like man covers. I mean, they're playing deep zone quarters coverage every single play. In the National Football League, quarterbacks are going to pick you apart, and that's what's happening in Philadelphia right now. And it just doesn't make sense. Like, it makes no sense. You have Darius Slay. You have Steven Nelson. When healthy, you have Anthony Harris. You have Ronnie McLeod. You have pieces in the secondary. Play man coverage, bring some extra pressure, and don't let quarterbacks sit back there and shred you. Like, it just it, 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 it doesn't make sense. And I've said this for weeks now. If I see what's wrong with the Eagles when I watch film, that means it is an absolute debacle right now in terms of scheme because I'm not a coach. I have no coaching background. I'm just a guy who talks about the Eagles on YouTube. Like, my knowledge of the actual NFL defenses is very, very slim compared to, I don't know, Jonathan Gannon. And yet when I see what's wrong, mm, that's when you know you're in deep trouble. Speaking of which, Fletcher Cox, and this was not very, uh, this wasn't really picked up by anyone covering Philadelphia, but I saw one person tweet, tweet about this, which is why I, I saw this uh, little video clip. Fletcher Cox was at, was at the podium yesterday and talked about how the scheme is essentially not letting the Eagles be aggressive, which is basically him saying that Jonathan Gannon's scheme sucks. And that means there's some internal trouble going on here. Philadelphia, their defense is an absolute mess. And honestly, <coughs> excuse me, Jonathan Gannon has to go. I know that firing people in the middle of the year didn't really help, and so I'm sure he'll last out the rest of the year. They got to completely reshuffle the defensive coordinators because Gannon is it's, it's horrific. It's absolutely amazing how stubborn he is with his plan for the defense. He was a hot young name going into the year, and he'll be a hot young name in terms of on the hot seat and out of here at the end of this year because it was it was just oh my gosh, it was horrible. Um. 
Our next thing here in terms of our, our takeaways has to be Miles Sanders. Like, Miles Sanders was fun while it lasted. That opening drive was a lot of fun. It was like, oh, wow, they're going to run the football. Oh, wow, eye formation, uh, quarterback under center, handoff specific, not an RPO, like an actual handoff to Miles Sanders. And guess what? It worked. I mean, he looked good. Six carries, 30 yards, five yards per rush. And then, of course, game with the reception to go ahead and go into the end zone. Everything was going correct until Miles Sanders, of course, tweaked the ankle. As of filming this, we don't know the significance of the Miles Sanders ankle injury. I don't think it's, like, broken or dislocated. So I don't think it's going to be season-ending. Although, again, that could change later on this afternoon. My best guess is it'll be a couple of weeks. It'll be one of those sprains that's a little bit nasty. But I, it, it obviously was bad because he was caught off the football field. But we don't know yet. But either way, it was fun while it lasted. It was fun whenever they decided to do it. And then as soon as Miles Sanders was out of the football game, Nick Sirianni said, yep, don't have to do this anymore. No more running. And then, of course, that's what happened the rest of the week. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing, man. It really is amazing that we've, that we've come this far. Who do you blame? Who's to blame for the Eagles' loss? I'm curious your thoughts on this. Who do you blame for the Eagles' just complete incompetence? Does it start at the top? Do you go to the bottom? Is it Sirianni? Is it Ginn? Is it Roseman? Is it Lurie? Like, give me your thoughts down below right now in the comments section. Speaking of uh, Howie Roseman, uh, let's just address the elephant in the room. Like, what does Howie think of this? Like, seriously, Howie Roseman has been a very polarizing figure in Philadelphia, right? I mean, they, like, he went from being, like, a great GM, and then the Chip Kelly era had him go to the back seat, and then he reemerged back and built a Super Bowl team where, like, oh, how he rocks, and then you saw the whole Doug Peterson, Carson Wentz debacle, and now this. Like, it's a ser serious question. Is this what Howie Roseman wanted? Like, is this what you wanted, Howie? Because I think Howie, based on what I have heard and what I've done in my, my research into this whole situation, is that Howie Roseman wants to be the man. He wants all of the power. And so by getting rid of Doug Peterson, you could get rid of someone who would kind of confl uh, conflict with you in terms of the power grab, right? Because that was the whole issue with Doug Peterson is that he wanted to do this, how I wanted to do that, and they butted heads too much, and how he eventually won, and they got rid of Doug Peterson, which looks very dumb, by the way, right now. I And he wanted Nick Sirianni, presumably because Nick Sirianni is a young, bright-minded head coach, but he could also, you know, be malleable and kind of make him into the mold that he wants. Same goes for Jonathan Gannon. So now, with Howie Roseman seemingly having all the power, like, is this what you wanted, Howie? Like, you got what you wanted, what do you think? Like, seriously, you, you you drafted Jalen Hurts, now you have Jalen Hurts. You wanted Nick Sirianni, now you have Nick Sirianni. You, uh, you know, wanted these linebackers and not address the linebacker in any draft any in, in, in recent history. This is what you get. And so I would just kill to know what is in the mind of Howie Roseman after today. Like, who does Howie Roseman blame? Does Howie Roseman blame Nick Sirianni? Does he blame Jeffrey Lurie? Does he blame the players? Does he blame, uh, like, oh my gosh, Howie Roseman, for as good of moves as he has made, and he did build a Super Bowl roster, the things that he has done that haven't worked out are just, I mean, astronomically bad. From drafting to coaching decisions to not going after different positions that need actual improvement, a.k.a. you know, wide receiver recent history, a.k.a. linebacker recent history, it just blows my mind. I mean, he... He, to me, is the uh, is the fish rotting from the head down. He's the head of the fish right now, and I think that he needs to go as well because he's made some decent moves. Like, the Eagles are going to have three first-round draft picks next year. That's a credit to Howie Roseman, but all the issues that are wrong with, with the Eagles are accredited to Howie Roseman as well, and the good right now does not outweigh the bad. It's exactly the opposite, uh, and it's just, oh my gosh, it's an absolute mess. Speaking of absolute mess, uh, my bets of the week were an absolute mess, thanks to a lot of teams not doing what I thought that they would. So if you guys want to jump in on uh, betting on not the Eagles, Eagles right now or betting on the Eagles to lose, do it with their friends at BetUS, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Promo code is Eagles125 to get that 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. I had a good game plan, which we talked about going into my picks of the week, and then it just kind of all fell apart. So I still have a big winning record. We're doing fine, you know, 20 and 13. That's in the green, so why you should follow my picks. But last week or this past week, the Panthers, that was completely on me. I thought the Panthers would actually be decent this year. They're trash. They got blown out by the Giants. That's my bad. Washington was not my bad. I correctly picked them to cover, and they would have covered had they actually scored points the three times they were in the red zone. They had three red zone trips and did, came up th all three times with zero points. That's their fault. Again, not my fault. Falcons, I was right on that one. Thank goodness. Philadelphia, I'll take, take the blame on that. Completely wrong. And then I definitely called Baltimore, or, or the Baltimore Ravens looking terrible against the Bengals. So two for three. Not terrible. You can't win them all, but it wasn't my best week. But I highly encourage you guys to keep following my bets and jumping in on the Bet uh, US promo right now. Promo code Eagles125. Uh, the link is down below me right now. Now, all right, next uh, takeaway here, um, I, I think the Eagles are going to be sellers at, at the deadline. Like, honestly, sitting at 2-5, and five, we talked about this last week, if they keep losing, they will be sellers. And there are some real possible trade deadline candidates that, 
The Eagles might look to ship away because the season might be lost, and Miles Sanders, depending on the injury, might be one of them. If he's done for the year by the time you watch this video, then obviously you can't trade him, but if it's a couple of weeks, maybe, you know, a team would make a move if he's healthy by the deadline, but you never use him, and, you know, why why, why keep him on the roster if you're not going to use him? Obviously, sarcasm. I would use him and keep him on the roster, but the Eagles won't, so what are you going to do? Fletcher Cox, I mean, he seems upset right now with Jonathan Gannon. He seems to be wasted right now in the final years of his, I guess you could say, prime or post-prime. He might be able to be shipped away to someplace better. Jalen Rager had a touchdown catch in garbage time. That's like the epitome of Jalen Rager doing nothing whenever it actually matters. And then Derek Barnett, who did he even play yesterday. I think I saw him, <laughs> you know, running after a quarterback once, but he's been a complete waste this year, and so I'd trade him away as well. So keep an eye on some possible trade deadline moves in terms of selling as we get closer to the NFL trade deadline. Uh, is there a player that the Eagles should trade? Like, is there someone on the roster that you would be okay trading away? Let me know who that is down below right now. For me, it'd be Barnett 1, Rager 2, Cox 3, and Sanders 4, because I like Sanders, but uh, so the Eagles don't. So maybe you know, why keep them if you're not going to use them? Um, final thought here. Let's just get to my final takeaway, and then we'll go and wrap this up. What happens next? Like, seriously, what happens next with Philadelphia? You're 2-5, and five, right? And now if you look at the schedule, it still is pretty easy. You're going to be favorites on the road against a winless Detroit Lions team next week, which I honestly think we could lose to, but they are technically bad. Chargers, Broncos, Saints, and Giants. Like, the rest of the schedule we've talked about every week is easy. So are they going to start winning games? Are they going to be able to turn things around? Or is the season officially dead and we should tank for a top draft pick? Like, I don't know what's going on, but seriously, what happens next? Because the NFC East is, is terrible, but Dallas is going to win the division for sure. I mean, look at the standings right now. And Philadelphia sits at the bottom, or at least next to the bottom, or along with the Giants, and goes, you know, it, where, where's the improvement? I just, I'm at a loss for words. I feel really jumbled up in this video today, but it's because I'm so angry and I'm at a loss because I said at the beginning of the year, and I'll finish on this, this is a talented football team. Like, this is a football team that can win 8, 9, 10, maybe even 11 games. But the coaching has been so bad. I've never seen a football team with enough talent to do something and yet so incompetent from a coaching perspective that they are completely handicapped in terms of actually trying to win a football game. It's embarrassing to watch. It's sad. I know you're frustrated, and I am too. Now, again, if Philadelphia makes any moves, and again, we're going to keep covering the team, win, lose, or draw. It's what we do here on the channel. We'll cover it here for you guys. So make sure you guys are subscribed to Philadelphia Eagles now. I appreciate all 21,000 of you guys. We keep approaching uh, hopefully 22,000 here in the next couple of weeks. Again, a frustrated Monday. I know you guys are frustrated too. All time for a day on our Philadelphia Eagles Now reaction video. We'll see what happens as the week progresses. Who knows? I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.